Ah, yes. Let's talk quarterbacks because, look, this is the sexy position in the NFL, and there's a lot of uncertainty. So people are all over the board on the top guys. Pete Briscoe has done his mock draft, 30-plus years NFL insider. Ryan Wilson, our draft expert. And look who's between them. Our quarterback, Danny Cannell. Won a division title with the New York Giants. Our Let's quarterback. Yes. Brady's not here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you talking I just, about? I just think you know, you know, the set just got a whole lot sexier since I got here, too. So let's well, do this. I would go that Look at you. <laughs> push back Let me tout your horn. I'm, I, I, I give him the big buildup every time I try to come up with some new Danny Cannell fact. Let's see what Danny comes up with in terms of facts about these quarterbacks and who he likes and who he doesn't like. All right. Malik Willis. I've seen him going at six. I've seen people tell me he's a third-round talent. Pete has him at 20 in his mock draft. Malik Willis to the Steelers at 20. How would you fill in that blank? I love it. I think it's one of my favorite spots in the draft of Pete's mock because of the fit, because of the value. Like, this quarterback class is not good at all. <laughs> but if you take Malik Willis at 20, I think that's where the value is at least reasonable here. And I think the fit of the organization makes a ton of sense. It's one of the more stable franchises across the league. I think they'll be patient with him. They've built young quarterbacks before. You've got Mitchell Trubisky who can kind of hold the fort down until Malik Willis is ready to play. They want to get more mobile. And the reason I have Malik Willis at the top there is potential risk with him, but I think the upside is more significant than any of the other quarterbacks in this class. Pete, how far away is he? Like, Trey Lance basically needed the apprentice year last year, and he got picked a lot higher than 20. He was in the top five last year. I I'm not talking about do they play the same way, but is that the type of thing we're talking about? Small school kid, is he that far away? I mean, can he ex be expected to play this year? No, he cannot be expected <laughs> to play this year. I, I mean, I'll put it out there. I just don't think he's ready to play. And I don't, I'll be honest with you, I put him in this spot because the Steelers have spent a ton of time with him. But traditionally, the Steelers pick big quarterbacks. They don't take little quarterbacks. It's not something they do. And he's short. He doesn't see the field very well. I think there's going to be a long process for him to become the NFL quarterback. There's no doubt the arm is big. That's a big arm. It's a cannon for an arm. And he can move. But I think the NFL, you have to be able to get through your progressions and get through your reads. And I think that's something that he didn't have to do much at Liberty and they're going to be asked to do much more of in the NFL. Ryan, yeah. what do you think of Malik Wells? Pete's not wrong. He's developmental. Danny's exactly right. He's developmental. But I think Danny touched on it, and Pete refuses to, to admit this to himself. The upside, the potential is, is what you're banking on. He's not going to come into play this year, Pete, and you're right about that. But year two, year three, that's what you're banking on. And I don't want to begrudge a team for overdrafting, quote-unquote, a quarterback in the first round because if you don't have a quarterback, you're not going to play. Uh, if, if he turns out to, to hit, who is he? Is he a better Kyler Murray? Is he... Lamar Jackson, which seems to be a diff, totally different, different kind of guy. athlete. Different Is guy. He Steve Young back in the day. No. I mean, like, who no. does he? Which one, which type of the running, throwing quarterbacks is he if he hits? I think physically, best case, if you have a spectrum of Russ Wilson and Lamar Jackson, he's probably somewhere in the middle of there. Um, he doesn't run as fast as Lamar. He probably runs closer to what Russ ran, which is in the four or fives. Uh, but that's plenty fast. It's Jalen Hurts. I think that's the comparison. That's better no, Jalen Hurts. He's, he's, he's got a better arm than He's Jaylen. got a better but, arm so than Jalen Hurts, but I think Jalen Hurts is a better passer. We wouldn't take Jalen Hurts at 20. We wouldn't take Jalen Hurts at 20. Or in the second round was actually a surprise for some right, people. But, so, but you're saying a better Jalen Hurts. So I, got, I, I think he's a hybrid. I think he's a hybrid of Lamar Jackson and Josh Allen. And the question marks are similar about all of them coming out. But he's not as fast as Lamar Jackson. And he's not. he doesn't have a cannon like Josh Allen. But similar yeah. questions about Josh accuracy. Like I told, six, I told like, Chris, exactly. Chris Trapasso this the other day when he mentioned that. Don't ever mention Josh Allen and Malik Willis in the same Why? sentence ever. They're not close to being the same. Why not? What, the questions that we had about Josh Allen are almost A identical. lot of people had about Josh, Josh Allen. Absolutely. If and Josh it, Allen, when he got the – Josh the Allen was a different quarterback when Josh until he Allen got played at Dayball Wyoming. And, when and Josh and Allen played at Wyoming, he was throwing to bouncers and bartenders and balls were bouncing off there. That's why what do you think he was doing at Liberty? What do you think he, Malik Willis was doing at Liberty? He can some ministers. hands and dropping them. He was, I'm telling you. <laughs> By the way, the little receiver number three at Liberty from uh, Jacksonville is a good little player playing in the NFL. By All right. Yeah. Next up, the other quarterback that people have talked about as a first-rounder, surefire. Uh, you you got him, Pete just got him in, right? 32. Last pick of the first round. Lions have two picks in the first round. They're going to pick at two and 32. But Kenny Pickett, Pitt to the Lions at 32. 
Pickett seems to almost be the opposite of Willis in a lot of ways, but do you like this pick in the first round because there are different ways to get success at the quarterback position? I do. I think this is the safest quarterback of all of them. The film is the best of any quarterback from this past season, but the upside, I think, is limited. Like, what could he be at the next level? You know, I talked to his coach at Pitt, Pat Narduzzi, just yesterday, and he was telling me, hey, I've, I've been around Kirk Cousins and I've been around Beth, Ben Rosselberger. I thought he was an Andy Dalton, but I think Kirk Cousins is a pretty good like comp for what yeah. he could he's be. He's that accurate. Kirk Cousins he's, picked the ice cream cone, the sprinkles off an ice cream cone. He did. <laughs> uh, Kenny Pickett can make all the throws. He is accurate. The one thing though that he needs is you notice the jump in production. It was because Jordan Addison, who's going through the Fred Bolitnikoff for uh, best receiver in college football last year, that made a massive difference for Kenny Pickett. He's going to need players like that around him in order to succeed at the next level. Yeah, and I think when I look at the Lions, they're not going to take a quarterback at the top of the draft, but they need to get a developmental guy. And he's one of those guys, you, all the stuff you hear about Kenny Pickett is when he walked into the building, no matter which building he visited, he was the quarterback. He, it was, he commanded the room. And that's what you want from your quarterback. You want that guy. Um, this is my huddle. This is my team. Fire in the this belly. Is my, yes, exactly. How we, is we, he different physically than Jared Goff? Jared Goff's a better athlete, has a better arm, more athletic. I it's not what I want to hear if I'm a Lions fan. What, you see what he ran at the combine. Pickett ran a 4 6 8, and they had to go back and adjust it to 4 7 1. Did you see his play when he had the little hesitation slide? Yeah, I they changed the rule because he was trying to I cheat. I know. I think he's more athletic <laughs> than golf, again, but I think golf throws a better ball. Yeah. That goes back to fire in the belly. You know, there's some talk that, that Jared <laughs> Goff doesn't have the fire in the belly. I don't necessarily agree with that, but you hear that. But, but I, I think mean, that's Pickett, why the Rams shipped him off because right. they, they didn't think right. he had it. Correct. Let me ask you this, Danny, and this is something maybe not as big an issue for quarterbacks, but. Um, Kenny Pickett's going to be 24 on June, on June 6. And I had him going to, to New Orleans, for example, in the middle of the first round. Jameis Winston is exactly three and a half years older than Kenny Pickett to the day, interestingly enough. But he was drafted in 2015. He's going into year eight. Do you care about that at all if you're GM? GM? No, I mean, not at this point. I think you value the leadership skills and how you're going to get players really polished and who can step into a locker room and not have to worry about immaturity issues or has he grown up or what's he going to be like the first time with money. There's a lot of questions that go with, you know, a 21-year-old yeah. quarterback. So I think you're going to get very mature. Or 24-year-old. I, yeah, I, I get what you're saying, though, about yeah. the upside. And that's why I think the ceiling is is kind of limited on yeah. Kenny Pickett Plus because he's maximized the, a lot. They play to their 40 nowadays, right? I mean, yep. think about it. In, in, in five and a half years, he still won't be 30. Yet. And the other thing right. is, he's a poor man's. This is what Ryan Pickett is. He's a poor man's Joe Burrow. Yeah. That's what he Kenny Pickett is. A yeah. I think Kirk Cousins. Though. I think Kirk Cousins is a closer comp than, than poor man's Joe Burrow. He's got a little more how, fire in the belly. How poor is the question? I want. <laughs> Andy, Andy Dalton's the answer. <laughs> well, he ain't going to be panhandling. Right? <laughs> <He's not laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, I found it interesting when I was looking at the props. Desmond Ritter is projected to go in the first round. His over under is thirty and a half. Thought about walking to the window, maybe laying a little over money that he doesn't go in the first round. But then again, you never know with the quarterback position. Pete does not have him going in the first round. Do you see Desmond Ritter going in the first round? And when you hear 30 and a half on the, uh, at the books, you think what, Danny? Um... I think that means that those other quarterbacks, Malik Willis and Kenny Pickett, are going to go higher. But I like where Pete has these quarterbacks going in this draft and Desmond Ritter not in there. But, of course, we've seen quarterbacks overdrafted throughout. Desmond Ritter is a nice quarterback who I think in the second round provides some value. I've seen him mock to go some places there, give him a year to develop. You know what he reminds me of is E.J. Manuel, who's a first-round pick coming out of Florida State, big, strapping kid, really athletic. But when you watch him on tape and when you watch his throwing motion, it doesn't match up with the body type. Like, you think it would be a cannon and just an easy release. It's a little bit more mechanical motion. It looks labored presses. at times. It, feels it like. does. It looks like he's trying and there's a lot of effort that goes into it. That to me is what you want somebody who's naturally the ball's just jumping off their arm. He, he's better passer than, than E.J. Manuel yeah. was. Yes. Come on. Yeah, but E.J. was taking, what, 13th <laughs> no, overall? Here's the point. It was, a, it was not a great quarterback draft. Or the perception was coming in. You were looking for somebody even in a year that was sort of a down year, and I, I get what he's saying, and I yeah, understand what you're saying yeah. as well. I mean, look, he's a better pa I think he's a better passer than people give him credit for. He doesn't have a cannon for an arm. I, I disagree. Well, how do you, why do you keep getting around the accuracy issues? Well, they said the same thing about Josh Allen, too. He's a unicorn. I think it's it, sometimes these guys make. Josh Allen was on a bad team. Cincinnati dominated their entire schedule. They, had, they well, should. Was, he yeah. should have been like, more okay, accurate. But like, go back to the Alabama game. Everybody killed him in the Alabama game. There were five passes knocked down at the line of scrimmage. One of those, Pierce beat the guy on an inside slant for a touchdown, and 
the ball got knocked down at the line of scrimmage. He saw the play. He read it right. He was going to him. It was a touchdown. That, that shows differently. It was knocked down at the line of scrimmage. I think he's a better passer. People give him credit for. By the way, there's some talk the Titans will consider him. Uh, you know, there's a big connection there with Rabel and, and Luke Fickle. So I think there's a consideration to replace Ryan Tannehill down the line. And the Lions could consider him at the back end of the first round. Would as well. you be comfortable going to the window and betting him not to go in the, as, as the top 30 well, picks? Here's what I'm thinking now. And just from you hear these late information stuff. Early in the draft process, we heard quarterbacks were go two were going in the top ten. As this is wound through the process, you know what we've gotten? There's a chance none of them will go in the first round. You were now. telling me two in the top ten. I believed you. I, I well, I heard I heard from a bunch of different people in this league. They thought two in the top ten. Now you're starting to get the feeling. Would it shock you if none of them went in the first round? No. So EK, I talked to four teams, not the Titans, and they don't need quarterbacks. Three of them had second or third round grades on Ritter, and one said maybe late one because of the things that Pete likes about him. He's a great leader. Don't don't misunderstand. Just the accuracy is here my concerns. So the over feels like it might happen, but. But again, it only takes one team. If it's the Titans, for example, they're inside 32 there. That, that could be the difference. If Davis Mills was in this draft class, yeah. he'd be the first quarterback taken. Mm -hmm. And Davis Mills went in the third round last year. Right. So we shall see. All right. Straight ahead. Everybody's been too nice to Pete. All right. Enough. <laughs> we got to wind up the guy in the middle and let him rip to shreds. People. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.